putting two tigers on the African savanna is like bringing them to a buffet, where they can bite and kill any animal they want. From zebras to antelopes and warthogs, possessing both strength and speed, they killed a whole carload of antelopes in just one day. This is a crazy animal experiment, and a terrible case of species invasion. It's well known that there are no wild tigers in Africa. Asians are their only habitat, due to human hunting and environmental destruction. The global population of wild tigers has been decreasing, with only around 3,800 left. John and David started a crazy experiment, to save this species by bringing two Bengal tigers to Africa, to train them for survival in the wild, and eventually let them live independently in Africa, and multiply in this wildlife paradise. Ron and Julie are a pair of seven-month-old siblings, who were originally raised by humans. When they first arrived in Africa, Ron weighed 50 kilograms, while Julie weighed only 40 kilograms. David, as a zookeeper, has to wear many hats. He is not just a zookeeper, but also a parent. David takes the tigers out into the wild to let them experience the feeling of freedom. However, to prevent the two tigers from misbehaving, David brings out a piece of meat at the right time to make them obedient. When they reach an open area, Ron and Julie catch the scent of antelopes. Their natural instincts make them want to hunt. They chase after antelopes several times larger than themselves. The young tigers are fearless, but the antelopes don't take them seriously because of their small size. When they see a bigger water buffalo, they know that a 900 kilograms water buffalo is not a vegetarian. They are not afraid of even lions, let alone two young tigers. They are scared off and run back to David when they encounter the water buffalo. Africa is indeed a dangerous place. Passing by a pond, they see a dead zebra. Ron and Julie curiously walk over and immediately bite the zebra's neck and mouth. David is surprised by this scene because it is a hunting method unique to the feline family, and no one has taught them, they are just born with it. But soon the two little ones start playing, completely ignoring the fact that it could have been a big meal. They seem to be used to being fed by others. The next day, they see a group of zebras not far away. The tigers lower their bodies and slowly approach, suddenly launching a surprise attack on the zebras. Although it is impossible to succeed, they have mastered the basic hunting skills. Maybe when they grow up a little more, they will have a chance to succeed. It is the first time the zebras have seen such a creature as a tiger, and their faces show fear. After the hunt, Julie's jaw is injured. David quickly finds medicine to treat it. In Africa's hot climate, if wounds are not treated promptly, they can become infected and even lead to death. As time passes, Ron and Julie are now 8 months old. Among all the feline animals, tigers love water the most. They get restless if they don't soak in water for a day when the weather is hot. As they grow older, it is time for them to learn new skills. Thick-skinned wart hogs are good practice targets for tigers. When the tigers see the wart hog, they charge straight towards it, scaring it back into its hole. Ron and Julie's performance has improved significantly but unfortunately, it is the rainy season. In just a few days, after the heavy rain, floods begin to rise, and everything around them is submerged. Even the local residents cannot escape. This is a once-in-a-century heavy rain, and they are forced to evacuate the camp and move to a place 480 kilometers away. The terrain here is wide and open, with relatively sparse trees. It's not a good hunting ground for tigers as there is no cover. In the distance, there is a herd of large antelopes. Without any cover, Ron and Julie quickly rushed towards them. Obviously, this was going to be very difficult. They did not realize that hunting was essential for survival survival. To train Ron and Julie, John and David brought in a realistic jumping antelope for the tigers to practice their hunting skills on. Ron quickly became interested in the jumping antelope and was soon chasing after it. Although the movements were a bit awkward, they eventually passed the test. To make the tigers associate hunting with food, another large antelope was brought in. This time, the siblings worked together to practice their hunting and killing skills. Although their movements were still a bit slow, they were able to successfully hunt down the antelope and had a big meal afterwards. However, the downside was that from then on, whenever they heard a car start, they would run after it thinking that there was food. To change this behavior, the trainers had to come up with a different training method. They hung prey from ropes attached to trees and trained the tigers to catch them again. After various types of training, Ron and Julie regained their wild instincts. Finally, the trainers threw a dead animal directly into the water to see how they would react. Dead animals are free meals in nature and the tigers must know how to deal with them if they want to survive in the wild. By the time Ron and Julie arrived, the dead animal had sunk to the bottom of the water. However, Ron surprised the trainers by jumping into the water and dragging the animal onto the shore. Tigers are indeed very intelligent cats. If the two tigers were released into the African savanna, would it cause a species invasion? John and David came up with a crazy plan to take the tigers to Africa and give them the strictest training. After the initial test, the next step was to test the tiger's ability to sense prey. After the cage was opened, Ron and Julie rushed out excitedly and quickly searched for prey. Julie found the prey first, but Ron, being the stronger of the two, snatched it away. Although Julie was helpless, this was a world where the strong dominated. Only after Ron finished eating did Julie get to eat. To maintain his authority, David had to take the food away from Ron's mouth, but Ron had regained much of his wild instincts and protested by showing his teeth. This led to a battle between man and tiger over the food. David did this to show who was in charge and to protect himself. Only by being more dominant than the tigers could he train them. Otherwise, he would become the target of their attacks. 
The training went on for six months. Ron and Julie have finally completed their first kill, but the prey was quite unusual, a hedgehog covered in spines that had pierced their entire body. David once again tried to steal food from Ron's mouth, which was a dangerous move that should not be imitated. David helped Ron by removing the spines from its body, causing Ron a great deal of pain. The last spine was stuck in the tiger's paw and was deeply embedded. David had to use a large pair of pliers to remove it, causing Ron to want to attack him in pain. If it were not for the strong bond between David and Ron, this action would have been suicidal. No tiger can ever be fully tame, and Ron had not learned its lesson from the last encounter with the hedgehog. It had now set its sights on a 3,000 kg rhinoceros. It was unclear who gave Ron the courage to provoke such a dangerous creature in Africa. Luckily, the rhinoceros was gentle and did not turn around to crush the tiger. Suddenly, Ron and Julie had mastered their hunting skills and were eager to show off their prowess. The warthog was a good opponent, with its fast speed and dangerous teeth posing a challenge to Ron and Julie. The hunting action began, and the warthog, which was relatively small, was caught not long after it ran out. Although it struggled and wanted to resist, it was futile as it was tightly locked by the two tigers. The two tigers had completed the most basic training, and now it was time to find them a bigger place to live. This was a 30,000 square meter enclosed area where they could live independently. Eventually, they would be sent to the vast grasslands in the wild. John and David faced enormous criticism for implementing this crazy plan for the two tigers. After settling into their new home, David had some emotional interaction with the tigers. Surviving in Africa was not easy for them, as they needed to consider various parasites and diseases they might encounter. Being non-native to the area, they had no immunity to the local climate and soil. David later took them out to hunt and tested their response to pearl birds. For African predators, Ron and Julie still seemed too young and inexperienced, and it took many attempts before they finally succeeded. As they grew stronger, David arranged even more challenging tasks for them. He brought in a truckload of antelopes from another area, which would be waiting for the tigers in a vast open area, anticipating Ron and Julie's performance. Normally, tigers hunted independently, but Ron and Julie were different as they had grown up together and had a close relationship. When tigers live in the jungle, they rely on trees and grass for cover during hunting and only launch attacks when they are close enough. But now that tigers live in the open grasslands, can they still hunt successfully? Let's wait and see. The antelope saw a tiger for the first time and instinctively ran away when the tiger ran towards them. The tiger chased them with all its might and ran as fast as a cheetah, but today's hunt was unsuccessful, and the tiger came back panting. To motivate Ron and Julie to tap into their potential, David did not feed them today, letting them know that survival depends on themselves. The next day, the two tigers had not eaten for two days. David did his best to hold them back to control the timing of their ambush, but for the hungry tigers, this was a very dangerous thing. Suddenly, the antelopes scattered in all directions, and Ron and Julie quickly chased after them. After a chase, Julie caught an antelope and quickly pounced on its throat. The antelope struggled, but it was no match for Julie's strength and was eventually bitten to death. When David tried to take the prey into the bushes to enjoy it, he unexpectedly had to fight off the two tigers. After returning to their home with a wire fence, David rewarded each of them with a piece of meat. So far, the tigers have only successfully hunted three times, and they still have a long way to go before they can live independently in the wild. What will happen when two tigers are released into the African savanna? Will this crazy experiment lead to a terrible species invasion? Let's wait and see. Ron and Julie have learned to hide beside the river and rush towards their prey when they see it, making great progress. They use the cover of trees to approach antelopes and wait for the right moment to launch an attack. Ron was drooling at the sight of this. When the antelope herd sensed danger approaching, they immediately turned and ran in the opposite direction. The siblings then intercepted them along the riverbed and waited for the antelopes to fall into their trap. The two tigers simultaneously caught an antelope, a scene that is rare to witness. This hunting was very successful, and John and David put in a lot of effort for this. Finally, they could see the fruits of their labor. The small tigers, who grew up in an environment where food was readily available, have now become skilled hunters through hard training. When facing the wild Julie, David must be cautious when trying to take food from her, and Ron must be even more careful because he has grown to 250 kg. Adding the fact that it is a male with a very strong attacking instinct, the man and the tiger immediately started a tug of war game, but there is no way the man's strength can match the tiger's. David was dragged forward all the way, but if they want to continue to train them well, they must take the meat from their mouths. Only by showing greater strength than them, can they convince the tiger to listen obediently. On a hot day, John took two tigers to play in the water, but the herd of cows on the shore caught their attention. Ron quickly swam to the shore, getting rid of John's control. Then he quickly sprinted towards the yellow bull, but the yellow bull was not easy to deal with. It kicked Ron's head with its hind leg. Fortunately, he wasn't seriously injured. With Ron and Julie's progress, they thought it was time for the tigers to face a bigger challenge. Another batch of zebra 
zebras was brought in from elsewhere. Zebras are stronger and more aggressive than antelopes. They don't care about lions, so how will they deal with tigers? Ron and Julie acted separately. Julie, who has a lighter body, wants to win with speed. While Ron, who is bulky, relies on ambushing. Julie chased the prey from behind. While Ron waited in front for the prey to fall into the trap, the siblings coordinated seamlessly, one biting the butt and the other locking the throat. In the face of the tiger's power, the zebras had no resistance. At this moment, Ron and Julie, finally became top-notch hunters, but the trainers still wanted to test something else. What will happen when faced with a group of walking ostriches, introducing the snake bird to test the tiger's speed? But before they could start, the tiger was scared off by its appearance. To prevent the tiger from being afraid of birds, David specially brought a bird's carcass. Julie approached the ostrich carcass first, and took a bite with her big nose, finding that she could eat it and wanted to drag it away. After seeing it, Ron followed suit, and the siblings immediately feasted under the tree. When the ostrich was placed in front of Ron the next day, he showed the dominance of a king. Thinking back to yesterday's delicious food, it lost its mind and ran fiercely towards it. Compared to last time, there has been a fundamental change. After that, chasing birds became a daily exercise. The running speed of the bird is no less than that of a cheetah. Through continuous efforts to catch it, Ron and Julie finally caught the snake bird, and their speed improved significantly. As time went by, the siblings had entered adulthood. Although they are siblings, they started to fight more often. Two tigers cannot share the same mountain. There can only be one king. But this time the fight was due to other reasons. Julie had entered her mating season. Ron wanted to do something indecent. But was rejected and vented his anger on the trainers. It almost resulted in a tragedy. In the end, for safety reasons, they had to separate them. Because they are siblings, they cannot reproduce. Ron and Julie have passed their training. Ready to be sent to the wilderness protection area. The brother and sister are proficient in setting up ambushes and executing precise attacks, leaving little chance for their prey to escape. At this point, they are not simply hunting, but exhibiting the killing instinct of felines. It didn't take long for Ron and Julie to capture a full load of prey. Although some had doubted the possibility of artificially raised tigers surviving in Africa, the results are now in, and many people have been proven wrong. Although the training process was somewhat complicated, it ultimately proved that wild animals will always retain their wildness, and the hunting instinct is deeply ingrained in their memory. Finally, after fitting Ron and Julie with trackers, they were released into the African wilderness. For these siblings, Africa will be a whole new beginning, and perhaps one day, tigers will conquer the entire African savanna.